Now, if you have a business with a physical location where you receive customers, you're going to find this lecture very helpful because in it, I'm going to give you some additional tips for a local SEO to really show you how you can bring your local business to the top of the search results. Now, I recommend you do these things in addition to all of the points we've already looked at in this checklist. But right at the bottom of this checklist here, you can see I've put in a link to additional tips here and that will open up the page here. You can also come to complete digital marketing course.com forward slash local dash SEO. And the notes are already here here. You can see that there's not too many. We could probably get through all of this in this longer lecture. But I think is it is important to really take a minute to understand how these search engines are different for local search results and really how that should change your search engine marketing strategy. In particular, I'm going to show you why it's important to claim your Google My Business profile and also to set up profiles for your business on Yelp, Facebook and TripAdvisor. Each of these online local directories are slightly different. So it's important you understand how they are different and how they can all fit into helping you really dominate the search results and gather priceless feedback and testimonials. Now, the key reason that I'm making this separate lecture on local SEO is really because Google treats searches for local businesses differently in the search results. For example, if I type in something like this restaurant here, it's a local restaurant where I am here in Dublin. And you can see that there is a huge uh, really preview of the business and its profile here in the sidebar. You can see it takes up a massive amount of real estate. And for normal keywords that we search for, that does not appear. This is called your Google My Business profile. And you can see here that there's a review system built in. There's also Google Maps integrated. There's also the address, the opening hours, the phone, uh, the popular times, the reviews are listed here. Uh, and also then a link off to the website, etc. So this is why local businesses are really different, why there's an extra element there, because there is this Google My Business profile. And also, even if you don't just search for the brand name, but if I search for something like um, a burger in Dublin, like if I wanted to find a restaurant, you can see that Google displays the Google local pack, which is really a summary of the top three profiles, Google My Business profiles in your area for that particular keyword. So you can see that is slightly different. There is this extra element that we don't normally talk about for like content marketing, etc. And your your strategy could be overall a little bit different, you might not be putting out so much content. But the key part of ranking in the search engines for local business is really building up good reviews on these profiles, because that is really the main metric that determines discoverability and rank the businesses that have the most reviews here are going to appear at the top for those keywords. Now coming back to our uh, local SEO notes here. And now that you understand why local SEO is slightly different, let's look at why local SEO is even more important than ever. So there are three main reasons that I want to cover quickly why if you haven't set up your these profiles, Google My Business, you should really do it as soon as possible. And the first reason that you should do it as soon as soon as possible, and hopefully this will give you some urgency is because of the growth of mobile and wearable devices. Google knows that a huge amount of people are searching on mobiles now. And so they're giving preference to businesses that are mobile optimized. And also, they are really tailoring a lot of their searches to mobile devices. So it's a key emerging way that Google is really presenting information to people, not a lot of people and businesses are taking full advantage of this. So there still is a bit of a lag in terms of in terms of businesses catching up those businesses that can really dominate the local SEO are going to have such an advantage now, but even more so in the future when mobile and wearable devices become even more popular. And I included this link in here to the article that showed that Google has actually more mobile searches than on desk 
desktop. That happened back in 2015. They were expecting it for a long time and the trend is just continuing that way. So it's important to really get set up for local SEO now before it becomes even more difficult. The second reason why local SEO is more important now than ever and how it's going to help you grow your business is that local searches, searchers are ready to act. I know personally when I'm searching, say in, in the city center and I'm looking for a hardware store, I'm looking for a restaurant uh, to go to at my friends, I'm ready to act, I'm ready to buy. That's not the case, say when I'm searching from home, I'm not in the place where I can buy immediately but on my mobile, generally, I'm so close to where I can potentially make a purchase that if you appear in the local searches, then you're going to have customers who are really hot and ready to buy. And that is a very different marketing strategy than maybe hitting them with an ad in a local newspaper or even dropping a leaflet in the door. They're not, they can't buy there because they're in their home. They're so far from maybe where your business is. But for the local search results, they're right there. Now, the final point why local SEO is more important now than ever is that competition is increasing. More people are starting to realize the power of local SEO. And so it's really important you start building your reviews and profiles now. Every day, there's new businesses being set up. And really, the quicker that you can get set up, you will have that advantage of those historical reviews and to really grow your business faster. Okay, so that is a little bit of a background on why you should give a lot of importance to local SEO uh, and really get ahead of the competition and start building up your reviews and profiles seriously. Now that you understand how SEO is different for local businesses, why it's more important now than ever, in uh, this part of this lecture now, what we're going to do is really look at the important things that every local business should do. And the first and the most important thing is that you should claim your Google My Business profile. Now, as I showed you here with this example, this is really the Google My Business profile. And this is what you want it to look like, want it to look like at the end of the day. To set it up, it's very, very simple. You can just claim your Google My Business profile here. Google will really walk you through all of the steps to make that happen. And there is one caveat with this setup process. It's not automatic. Google will actually send you out a postcard to really confirm your physical address. Um, so it is important. I think there's maybe a week or two weeks to that get sent out fully and your location is confirmed. But how, if you want to get started, all you have to do is come into this link. You can type in your business name and address and really see if there is any Google My Business um, business registered there because you don't want to duplicate and set up a new one. You can really come in and see if it has been registered. But the setup process is easy. You just want to make sure you're filling it out 100%. Now coming back to the notes, uh, there is one important thing that when you're setting up your Google My Business profile and even these other profiles as well, you want to make sure that your name, address and phone number is really consistent across all profiles. And that's really known as NAP. Um, the reason is, is because if in the search results, Google sees that you have put in an address here that's slightly different to the address here, even if it's something like ST rather than street, or if you put in here that your opening times are this and on your website, it's slightly different or on any of these other profiles, it's different. Google will really push your site and these other profiles down in the search results because they see that information as being inaccurate. So what I suggest you do before you set up your Google My Business profile or the other profiles is you actually write down on a piece of paper the exact details that you'll be using across all profiles and make sure that if there's any changes in opening times, uh, in the future or days of the week that you're open, etc., that you really update them across everything and not just maybe one like your Google My Business profile. So that's the most important thing to do. Claim your Google My Business profile. And the reason this is the most important is because it gets such huge visibility and Google gives it such huge visibility. There's a lot of people competing now for the local search and review market. You've got Google here. You've got Facebook with their local business pages. 
and review systems. You've got TripAdvisor, uh, you've got Yelp as well. Here's another one, Zomato. There is a lot of people competing for this space, menu pages, but really Google controls the real estate. They control the search results and obviously they're gonna give preference to their own product. So if you want to really just focus on one to get started, this is the really one that you should be working on. Okay, so after you set up your Google My Business profile and filled out all the details, the next thing that you should do is continue to set up more than just that. You really wanna dominate the search results and gather priceless feedback and testimonials from as many people as possible. So you can really dominate the search results for your keywords like this business has done here. It's their website, then their Facebook, then their TripAdvisor, then another review here from a local food blog. And you can see that if anybody is searching for this, there's no chance that they're going to any other result or they've really dominated the whole first page for their own brand name, which is absolutely fantastic. So what you wanna do is take a look at some of these other profiles. Now the first one is Yelp, and what I've include here, included here is a link to actually claim your business on Yelp. Now let's talk about some of the advantages of Yelp and how it's maybe different than building up the uh, profiles on some of these other platforms. I'm gonna make the distinctions as well with Facebook and TripAdvisor where they can really play a part in your local marketing strategy. But let's start with Yelp and really how it's different. It's purpose built really for reviews only. That's all that it does. That's different to maybe Facebook where the review system is just a small part of their Facebook page. It's not the main reason that people use Facebook. The main reason that people use Facebook is really to share and connect with their friends. But the main reason that people use Yelp is really to leave reviews. That's what the whole thing is really built for. You can see here, write a review is front and center on the page. Whereas on the Facebook page, it's really even hard to see where you do leave a review. Um, it's not easy and it's not a really a priority for them. There's a small tab here that shows them. And yeah, I can write a review in here. But you can see it's not as front and center. And as a result, the... Uh, feedback and the reviews that you get are not as detailed. The great thing about Yelp is that people often leave quite detailed reviews. For example, even a review this long with photos and stars and a check-in is not normal. You wouldn't see something that big generally on Facebook. You can see there actually are for this restaurant some long reviews, but there definitely isn't the, the kind of the check-in and all of the photos there. So as well as the reviews being a bit more detailed with images and check-ins, another thing is that people really create profiles. You can see how many reviews they've left if they're an elite Yelper. And uh, there seems to be a very passionate group of people who go and review restaurants and new places. And, um, and that's why it's really important as well. Not only can you get these great pieces of feedback and testimonials, but you can get into the influence of these people, serious Yelpers, who often have like food blogs and they do this semi-professionally reviewing places. They have a social influence that you can really tap into, which is not as prevalent on say Facebook. So there's a community of people here that if they like your business, if you're in the Yelp ecosystem, they can really start to promote you out to their audience um, and that is a, is a great advantage of Yelp. So those are some of the advantages of Yelp. You can dominate the search results, you can gather that feedback and also get into the sphere of influence of uh, those serious Yelpers. Now the next profile that you can set up is really your Facebook page. And this is the example that we've really been looking at here. Now, the key reason that you might wanna be on Facebook is to leverage what Facebook is really best at, and that is using other people's social networks to market your business. Everybody on Facebook, the average number of friends that people have is 200. So that's 200 people for each person who likes your page, who shares your post, that can really help to promote your business to their friends. We talk a lot about social networks, 
but Facebook is really the best example of that. It has such a viral effect built into it because re people are really connected to their friends. So in terms of friends, sharing posts, liking posts, commenting on posts, tagging friends, that's a huge way to get your business into the sphere of attention of their friends. And we'll be talking about that more in the Facebook marketing section of the course. But it's just important to understand how that is different from Yelp. Yelp doesn't have that built in. Google doesn't have that built in in the search engines and the Google My Business profile. And TripAdvisor doesn't have that built in. There isn't that social network driving all of that interaction. So that is why Facebook is really important and how it should play a part in your local marketing strategy. Now, the final profile that you can really set up is TripAdvisor. And once again, I've linked off to the page here where you can list your business on TripAdvisor. Now, TripAdvisor is a site primarily used by tourists to research what they're going to do once they arrive at their holiday destination. So this uh, particular local directory is really for restaurants, hotels, attractions, things to do or vacation rentals. So it's not for every single business. Obviously, you're not going to go to the dentist or a hardware store when you're on holidays. But uh, if you want to tap into the tourist market, you should really put your profile here. They have an internal search engine with TripAdvisor that shows things to do, restaurants to see. Again, there's a big community of people. And if you want to tap into the tourist dollar, then this is really the place that you can do it. At the end of the day, business is business. And if it's local customers or customers who are just visiting, it doesn't really matter. This platform really gives them a voice to detail their experience. And essentially it works in the same way as Yelp or Facebook reviews. People can really leave their reviews and there is a great system there encouraging people to come back and leave more reviews. And you can see how many people have seen your reviews which is encouraging. And I must say, I've left reviews on TripAdvisor and I think they do a good uh, way of getting you to come back to the site to see how many people see your reviews, etc. So that is really TripAdvisor. It really does tap into the tourist market. And if that plays a part in your business, you should really uh, use that as well. So that is really Google My Business, Yelp, Facebook and TripAdvisor. They all have slightly different benefits. Yelp, there's a big community there. Facebook is that leveraging that social network that people have. TripAdvisor is building into that tourist market. Now for all of these pro all of these profiles, what really is consistent across all of them is that positive reviews are the primary metric that drive discoverability and rank. So within the platforms itself and on the search results in Google, it's really that those positive reviews that drive the discoverability and rank. And so what you should really uh, think about is how do you get more reviews? And the easiest way to get more reviews is to ask customers to leave reviews. Now that is a simple thing to say, but it can be harder in practice. But one strategy that I would encourage you to use is to, if you have enthusiastic co customers, really start by asking them how they found out about your business. So you can get really a sense of where they might leave a review. So if they said that we heard it from friends on Facebook, or they said we read the reviews in TripAdvisor, then you can build up a bit of a rapport with them. And then as they are leaving, you can just ask them, hey, it'd be great if you could tell your friends on on TripAdvisor or even leave it open, like, you know, come back anytime and bring your friends or tell your friends even that making that connection for them about where they heard about your business and that they have to then tell their friends, then they can really put the two pieces together and uh, fix finish it out. So this is a very simple strategy, but it does work. And the reason I know is because a business owner did it to me and I really left a result, a review as a result. I was in Malta on holidays and I wanted to take a boat trip and do some outdoor activities. And I was really blown away by how this business had so many more reviews than every single person and every other business that does similar things. 
And really the way that they got that was the business owner came around, talked to every single person, asked them you know, how they found out about it. And then at the end of the boat trip, once he had made a connection with us, uh, he asked us, you know, tell your friends. He left it as open as that, but he'd already figured out that we'd read the reviews on uh, TripAdvisor. And uh, we talked a little bit about the platform and how great it was for finding out information. So the connection was made. And as a result, I did leave a review and uh, it was a five star one. Now, the final tip to really wrap up this local SEO section of the course is really how to respond to negative reviews and not to be afraid to do that. Obviously, if you're putting yourself on all of these review platforms now and again, you're going to get a review that isn't as positive. But I would really encourage you to respond to that uh, review and it can actually help you generate more reviews because it shows the business owners are listening. And at the end of the day, that's really the most important thing for a lot of customers that somebody has actually listened to their feedback, taken it on board. And you can also use that negative review as an opportunity to point to solutions or fixes and encourage the next person who comes along and reads that review to actually become a, a customer and come along for a visit. To give you an example of that, there's a review here for a local gym where I live. And you can see that there is a comment here. It's four stars, which is pretty positive. But there are some suggestions that um, the person has made. Talks about limited space and that you have to wait around for the showers and lockers to be ready, etc. Now there is a response from the owner here and he says, thanks for posting. We appreciate your review. We are delighted to announce that there are new bigger fly fit gyms opening soon on Georgia Street and South Circular Road. So this is really a solution to the guy's problem here. He says they're, they're, they're not spacious, they're crowded. And so what the owner is doing is using that as an opportunity to really promote the new openings that they're having, which do solve the problem. They're opening the gyms that takes other people out of the big main gym, but it's a great way to really promote some of those new gyms. And uh, if anybody sees this now, it's really closed at the issue. They won't see it as a negative thing and they'll actually become aware of some of the options. So I hope to see you there next time. So that is just a great example of someone turning a negative review around and really setting it up so the next person who reads it um, really will come along and visit. So that's what I really recommend for local SEO. It's maybe not such a content marketing strategy, but it's more based on these local business profiles. Google My Business being the most important and then Facebook, uh, TripAdvisor and Yelp. And they all have slightly different benefits. Yelp really tapping into that community of people, Facebook leveraging that social network and TripAdvisor really tapping into that tourist dollar. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this bonus lecture for your local business and uh, I'll see you in the next section of the course.